My name is Martin. My name is Miley. And we are two thirds of your academic advising <laughs> office. Our, our counterpart is currently not here. Her but. name is Irene. <laughs> she will be available during the fall semester. Yes. And some of you may have already met with her in person. But uh, so today what we want to do is help you get oriented um, to help you start with the transition into UH Manoa and more specifically our college. So we will be going over the admissions checklist. Um, and so hopefully all of you have received this packet. Uh, but if you did not, contact the admissions office to have it sent to you. But if you don't have this handy in front of you, you can go to the website, uh, which you can see through your screen. Um, the FAST URL is manoa.hawaii.edu forward slash admissions with an S forward slash accepted. And that will take you to the website that we are going to be working off of. But <clears throat> Depending on when you were admitted, there has been a couple of additions to the acceptance packet. Um, the first thing is they're, they're, they are going to have in-person orientation um, starting on August 17th, and it's a multiple day thing for you and your family. So your family would attend the Ohana orientation session while you will be coming to the Rainbow Warrior session. So if you are a freshman, that starts on August 17th. If you are a transfer student, then your orientation date is August 25th. The other addition to the acceptance packet is summer advising. And we will also be participating in that, but this is to ensure that you are registered for the right courses to start off your academic pathway correctly. Um, but hopefully, and we'll, we'll go over how to do those things today as well. Okay. So this is the Rainbow Warrior Checklist. Um, so everything that you need to know about what you should do from now until the start of the school year is located within this booklet, but also on this website. So if you scroll down, the first thing that you should be doing is creating your MyUH account. Um, and to do so, you will need to have your student ID number, which is located on your, uh, admissions or your acceptance letter. Uh, if you do not know that, or if you do not have your acceptance letter, uh, please contact the admissions office so they can get that to you as soon as possible. Now, when you choose and create your UH username, uh, keep in mind that this username will be your email account as well. So you want to choose something professional, right? Um, because hopefully you'll be using, or you will be using that for your school and uh, maybe even after that. Um, once you create your UH name or your, your UH account, through that, you can access your UH, your school email, where all official communication uh, will be done through that email account. Uh, your MyUH services, which is important because that's where you will be able to review your financial aid, as well as accept any of the aid offers that are provided for you. Uh, STAR GPS, which is critical to registration. Uh, which Miley will cover more in detail after. Um, Seeky, which is if you are eligible for federal work study, or even if not, and you wanted an on-campus job, you could go to the Seeky website for that. And then Laulima is an internal ser um, service that we use that you communicate with your faculty for class assignments. And then the ITS help desk, that's if you have any um, technical issues, you can contact them to help you resolve that. Okay, the next step is applying for financial aid. If you did not apply for financial aid, you missed the boat. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, come on, kind of, kind of. You missed the boat as in terms of scholarships for this year. We always do it one year in advance. So it is too late to apply for scholarships for the upcoming school year. Uh, but you can still do the FAFSA to see if you qualify for any federal aid. Um, so definitely do that. To go to, or to complete the FAFSA, you go to fafsa.gov. Um, or you can just look on the website here. Our school code, our federal school code that you would put on the FAFSA is 001610. Um, and then that will have your student aid report sent to our financial aid office, which will allow them to give you a financial aid package. Now, even if 
you feel that you will not qualify for any of the federal aid, uh, we do highly recommend that you do the FAFSA because that is how you will be eligible for scholarship opportunities. Um, our college is fortunate enough to have our own scholarships that we provide. Um, and there is a, a centralized scholarship application that you can complete that will um, make you eligible for not only the general university's scholarships, but, but our scholarships as well. And so to do that, there is that link there or that button, apply for financial aid and scholarships. Okay, meet with us. That's not this us, that's the admissions us. Um, and then they do different things like campus tours, they visit the high schools um, and college fairs. And then um, they have a preview day that, that passed. So it's previewed out, but that's okay. <laughs> you can still schedule campus tours. I definitely recommend it, but you can also schedule a tour with CTAR so that you can see our own facilities, um, talk with an advisor if you want. Uh, now, step four is very important. If you haven't done so already, you should submit your intent to enroll um, form and the tuition deposit but only do it once you know that UH Manoa is the institution that you do want to attend in the future. Because I, it is, I did that. You did that? Yeah, I did that. Yeah, oh, buddy. I you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we can hear everything. So, so for you booing us, like that's very hurtful. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm so sorry. Air high five. All right, so. I thought, I thought it was just a video. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is real time. I, we hear, okay, anyway, anyway. <laughs> okay, well, no, this is important. So if you have any questions, just feel free to interject and ask the questions in real time. There's also a chat function that um, we have people operating the computer. So if you ask any questions and you don't want to verbalize it, um, you can chat your questions to us and we'll, get, we'll answer that as well. But once you submit your, your tuition deposit, that will activate your student record, um, and that will let us know that you are going to be attending in the fall, uh, which, is, which is good, and that will allow you to register for classes. Um, so the deadline to submit your tuition deposit is May 1st, um, but since that date has passed, as soon as possible, yeah? And it is $200, and you can pay that deposit online. Um, or you can mail in a check. Now, if you need housing, if you're coming from out of state, um, you can submit the housing contract. There is a separate deposit for uh, housing as well. The move-in dates for the fall semester is August 21st for incoming freshmen and August 23rd for transfer students. Um, I don't believe housing assignments have went out yet. Uh, so if you didn't receive one, do not panic, but you should be getting it uh, relatively soon, within the next week or two. I do have a question. Okay. The question is, can I still apply for courses if I didn't send in my tuition deposit? Yes. So submit your tuition deposit as soon as possible, um, but new incoming students can't register yet. So that's why we're doing the session now to let you know how to get ready to register for it once registration goes live, which is coming up next week next week next week seconds. yeah so again it's it's $200 um, if you pay it online or $100 cash in my hand no I'm just kidding I'm just joking don't do that um, okay <laughs> with housing you can also do meal plans um, go to this website to see uh, what works best for you uh, we do have a lot of good eateries on campus but also surrounding the campus um, there are a lot of off-campus options for you too but that's outside of the meal plan. Uh, make sure you submit your final documents. So if you're a high school student, make sure that you've requested that your high school send us your official final high school transcript, um, meaning that you never touch that copy. It comes straight from your high school to us. If you are a transfer student, you need to make sure that your final um, post-secondary institution sends us your transcript. That, that includes your, your last semester grade. So, if it's spring semester, have those sent. Um, if you are taking summer courses at your, your institution uh, after those grades are posted. Um, so that way admissions can evaluate your transfer credits and have that sent in. So 
prepare your class schedule. That's what we will go over. Um, you, can, you can start to work on that on your own. We definitely recommend that you book an advising appointment with us so that we can ensure that you're taking the right classes as soon as you start to maximize your, your time with us. Um, who is my advisor? We are. Nah, I don't know what that link does, but okay. Um, paying for college, this is important. Um, be nice to your parents, hopefully they're gonna kick in, but make sure that you pay or take steps to do so. So apply for financial aid, um, take steps to utilize any financial aid loans if you are eligible. The university does offer a, a payment plan. Um, it is interest free, but there is a setup fee for that. Um, and to do so, you can click on this button for payment plan options here. The earlier you do it, the more, uh, the less each payment will be, each installment will be, because there will be more installments. So the later you wait, you know, there are less, there's less time to pay it, so the, the bigger it will be. Okay, submit your health clearances. So you do have a health clearance form um, that was included in your acceptance packet. Uh, so you can give that to your physician and then they can sign off on it, or you can just submit your shot record. We do need to have a TB, this TB uh, test needs to have been done within uh, one year uh, prior to the start date, so within this, this year. Um, and then uh, MMR, two, two shot record for that. And then that, the health clearance form gets submitted to our health services office. And then you can find their contact information on the website and you can also uh, click on this button here. And then getting oriented, um, you can see that uh, those are the in-person dates listed on the website and you can get more information about it by clicking on the new Rainbow Warrior orientation. Um, and then we have our own orientation, in-person orientation on August 21st. So hopefully you can make it. We'll be there. So it's going to be fun. Okay. And that's... Questions? Questions? So we're taking a little pause to see if you have any questions. Martin's given you a lot of great information with our um, new Rainbow Warrior checklist. So feel free to type your questions into the group chat. Okay, here we go. Do we only go to one of the orientation dates? Yes, so for the, the orientation dates, there's for incoming freshmen, there's multiple options. So you would choose one. And then for transfer students, there's just one option. That's a great question. Are there any other questions? Okay, and if you wanna talk rather than type it in, uh, just unmute your mic and you could ask a question. Okay, I see. Um, so I think I want to change my major. So how do I go about doing that before, you know, before registration? Um, for the so the part of the checklist where you can click um, the search for your advisor so if you think that your major is with another college and not within the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources um, you could use that to try and locate the advising office for your new major um, you could also contact admissions for assistance as well since you haven't started just yet um, so those would be two things I recommend. Um, and OnStar, so when we go over the registration demo for STAR GPS registration, um, there is a, a function where you can run a what if journey and you can actually project the requirements for the major you're wanting to enter into and you can register from that um, function. So that's another thing you could do to just view the kinds of courses that the registration system recommends. What major were you thinking of? I, so I'm really in between wildlife biology or um, marine biology and I wanted to talk to someone about what each of those careers entail because I'm not sure what actually it consists of so I just I guess I just need help figuring out which one is best for me and then go, and then you know find out which classes I need to take yeah so definitely um, the good thing about star and we'll cover this but 
uh, when you do the what if journey, you can run the what if journey for as many majors as you want. Um, you just have to do it individually, so one at a time. But then you can kind of project to see what your, your academic pathway would look like, depending on what those majors are. Um, I can tell you this, you probably want to stick with us if you want to have fun. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All the majors at UH Manoa are good. <laughs> and um, so with biology and marine biology, those fall within the College of Natural Sciences. So you can also access advisors from that office if you um, go onto the UH Manoa main website and look up College of Natural Sciences. There will be a link that you can select for advising. Um, so you could also do that. Yeah, but we're pretty awesome. So, <laughs> I mean, within, within our program, so we have natural resources, environmental management, and there is a wildlife management and ecology specialization. Um, so feel free, though, to reach out and just get as much information as you can in, to help your decision making. Yeah. Okay. Any, yeah. I'm just feeling really overwhelmed by searching through all the different, like, websites. I feel like there's, like, a lot of different portals that... I need to look look at but so there's star and then there's my uh and then there's um the, the gmail I, I don't know. okay 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 um don't feel overwhelmed right um that you know there are a lot of options so it's it's better to just go slowly one at a time like don't don't be inundated with too much information. But the MyUH portal, that's the repository for everything that the university has to offer. So it's a one-stop shop, and then you can access all of our services that way. Um, and then each, each link within that, it's a different service that you can do. So the Gmail, that's just your, your UH email account. Um, the Star GPS registration, that's how you register for classes, um, but that's also how you can see what the major requirements are for other programs by doing the what if journey, and we'll, we'll show you that. Um, the other thing that she had mentioned, well, this is through your MyUH portal, that's also how you will check your financial aid. Um, so again, it is, it is a lot um, because we tried to make the MyUH portal as robust as possible to make it a one stop shop for everything that you need in regards to. To UH Manoa. Um, but if you if you ever feel like it's too much or if you have questions, you can always schedule um, an individual advising appointment with us. And you can even do so now. So even though you may not physically be in state or on island, um, you can book an appointment with us and we can do this over the phone. Okay. And, even, I'm and this here is on Saturday. So you're you're um, gonna you're going to be here on Saturday? No, I just got here like Three days ago. Oh, so. well, welcome. welcome. Um, I suggest going to Zippy's, Leonard's, <laughs> Malasada, and the beach for sure. Um, but, okay, so you can meet with us. We're here. We're here all summer. We're not here on Saturday or Sunday, okay. though. Um, or any... Oh, that's a great question. So you can go to our website, which is CTAR, that's C-T-A-H-R dot Hawaii dot E-D-U. And then from there, you can um, access the academic advising site and then book an appointment that way. So we'll walk you through the steps. Okay. So you go to this website and then um, I, I just click that. Thanks. And then so academics and then on the left side, you see advising. And then if you scroll down, And then there's a book now, so you can do that. So you can book an advising appointment um, for in-person. We can do it over the phone um, if you're not physically here or um, if, you can't, if you have problems getting to campus, and we can do that. We can, we can not only go over your major requirements, um, your CTAR major requirement, uh, but we can also help explain how the MyUH portal works um, if you have additional questions. Okay, so this is after I, um, I find out which major I want to stick with, and then there's a, an advisor for each, 
like each different major, right? Yes, I think what might be helpful because it seems like you want a little bit more support. And so you can book with us with CTAR advising, and then we can assist you in your questions and how to navigate the registration system, how to use the what if journey. And then we can refer you to whatever advising office um, the major you are thinking about is connected to, and then you can continue to explore with an advisor in, in a different college if, you know, if that's something you decide. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah, okay. that sounds good. what I want. Okay, great. All right. We are here for you, even if you break up with us. There is one more question. <laughs> okay, one more question. Is, do you do we only go to one of the orientation dates? Yeah. Oh, we covered that. Oh, yeah. the ACE one. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, the ACE and okay. SAR registration. So um, oh. another question that we see on the comments um, is, what is the difference between ACE and STAR registration? Um, so ACE involves learning communities that are set up um, to offer you the opportunity to take classes that are shared with a group of incoming students. Um, and there's different themes. So there's, for those of you that might be interested in um, pharmacy or dentistry, something that's pre-health, there's a pre-health cluster. So if you register through ACE, then, um, and you have to do that by May 19th, um, so that's for this incoming fall 2019. Um, if you register through ACE, they will, the coordinator will add three classes that you will share with other students in the cluster. And then after two days, so after 48 hours, you'll be able to add in the remaining courses to make yourself full time. Um, if you register on STAR by yourself, then it, the registration is a la carte. So you'll get suggested courses based on your major. Um, but you will be the person registering yourself in each section. And there's not a learning community that's necessarily associated with just doing it on your own. Um, so th those are the differences. I encourage you to look at the ACE learning clusters if you're interested. Um, and then let's see, so a second question. When I received a letter from CTAR, my enrollment Enrollment in dietitian courses was conditioned with the completion of two courses. And then it, so the, the question seems quite specific. Um, so with our dietetics program, there are prerequisite classes to officially enter the major. And sometimes students haven't completed all of the prerequisites. And so they start in food science and human nutrition. They work with um, the advisors to plan their dietetics the pre-dietetics until the point at which they meet the prerequisites. So if you're a new student, you eventually want to get into the BS in dietetics, you don't quite have all the courses, that's okay. Um, you can start in food science and human nutrition. They share the same supporting courses, the same core classes, and then you work with an advisor to help you meet your eventual goal of transferring in. Um, so we definitely can help you with that. And if you have questions, I, I encourage you to set up an advising appointment so we can really look at your record and see what might be going on with those prerequisites. So that was um, the most up to date. And there, if you look at the group chat, there is a link for the ACE learning clusters. You can go ahead and if you're interested, look at those. Um, and so now we'll look, we'll take some um, questions through the audio. <laughs> so if uh, anyone hi. wants to ask. Hi, um, this is what, uh Mitsuo, I, I um, thanks to you, um, I have finished the, all the prerequisites this semester. Oh, great! Yeah, and the uh, um, I just got a grade today. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey. The, Congratulations. Um, thank you. And the, uh, all of the, um, the 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 letter I received was, has a condition, and the, my question is that the, should I do any other transaction uh, from, from my side to apply to the dietitian? Or since I applied the dietitian uh, already, then um, it is automatically uh, applied. Or, the, uh, long story short, yeah. should I should I do any anything to apply to a diet di dietitian course? I think you should um, schedule an appointment with an advisor because usually what happens is we have to do a manual review, yeah. um, especially uh, when it's conditional. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you 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 made the all the planning, Andy. 
uh, it, it is in, in a star system already. Right. Yeah, I remember we yeah. met and we did planning, but because you didn't finish the classes yet, um, yeah. we didn't get to look at the final grade and verify. So this would be just to do the final like verification and yeah. you can request a phone appointment. Like if you don't want to come into campus, but you want me to look at your record and verify the grade and that you meet the entrance requirements. I see. Um, we just have to manually do it. I and see. then someone has I to change yeah. them to the I will, I will uh, make a reservation for the uh, book the uh, appointment. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. There's a question from Jessica. Okay. Is it mandatory for freshmen to house at the school? It is not. It's not required um, for you to live on campus. Um, it's definitely, it can be a good option for students. It can be a good opportunity to meet other um, incoming students and current students and to take part in all the activities that are planned for students in the residence halls, but it's not required. Okay. okay. Any other? Oh, okay. So we're going to pause from the questions. Yeah. And then we're just going to um, um, move towards looking more at how to find out when you're registering for classes, how to prepare your class schedule, and then we'll do a demo of how to actually register and use STAR. Um, so Martin already brought up and started talking about my UH services. So this is a good um, point that you can sort of leap off of into different um, types of uh, resources that the campus has. And what I like to do is I'll go to my UH services and if I want to look up things pertaining to registration, I'll go ahead and type in register and I'll indicate the campus because we're part of a 10 campus university system. So this will narrow down um, the search results. So register Manoa. Um, and you will see that there's, there's lots of different options. So of course, star GPS registration, um, the registration timetable is very helpful. So the registration timetable is actually gonna give you important um, registration appointment information. So you can see here that based on your class level and the earned credit hours for you coming in, there's a particular start date for registration. So there's a day that's listed and a time. This is just the start. You actually can continue to register and make changes to your schedule through the summer. Um, so this is just a starting time. Um, for those of you that are freshmen, you'll have to scroll down closer to the bottom. So you can see registration for incoming students for the fall 2019, it's gonna range from start dates on May 22nd to May 24th. Um, also important, there's some highlighted semester guidelines and um, sorry, it says semester information and deadlines. Uh, so you will see that there is a payment receipt deadline of Thursday, August 15th at 4 p.m. Um, once you register for classes, you're not going to receive a bill in the mail. So you'll have to just put that date in your Google Calendar. Um, if you are going to be receiving financial aid and you've confirmed this with the financial aid office, you've accepted your financial aid award, then you, this does not apply to you. Um, but if so, if you're not receiving aid, then it's important to either make the payment um, or sign up for a payment plan, as Martin mentioned. Um, okay, so registration timetable. Um, we're also going to look at, so at the top right-hand corner, um, we can link to the campus registration information. And what we're looking for is our registration guide. That's going to take us to our next checklist. So you did a great job with the, the admitted student checklist, yay. So we're going to go to this um, online registration guide for UH Manoa. And then we're going to look for the step-by-step -step guide to registration. And this is something that you can refer back to. Um, okay. So here we have the guide for registration. And then we'll scroll down to the step-by-step. -step. There's a lot of information on here. So as you go through the registration process, even if you end up getting errors, and we'll talk about this more when we do the demonstration, but if you get errors, you can actually look up like, what does this error mean? Um, okay, so registration step-by-step. -step. So important steps to take to prepare for registration. So confirm your eligibility, you talked about making sure that you confirm you're admitted and then also submit the intent to enroll and they're still accepting the intent to enroll so please do submit it if you haven't already um, we talked about meeting with an academic advisor whether by phone or in person um, it's important when you log into your star to see if there's any holes on your account that are active that could prevent you from registering 
How do you tell if a hold is active? You look at the date of the hold because the date indicates when it starts. So if it's projected to start way in August, then it's not active and it's not preventing you from registering. Um, and then making sure to look at the timetable, checking your registration time. Um, so when it comes to the class availability, so there's different places that you can look at what is being offered for the semester you're registering for, the times, the days of the week. Um, you can do it through STAR GPS registration, which we recommend because it's very streamlined, or from the MyUH um, services, you can actually look at the class availability. And that is gonna allow you to look by department. Um, so because it didn't pop right up, I'm gonna just look up the Manoa class availability. Okay, and then you'll see with the class availability, you could, you'll click on the fall 2019, and there's all the different departments and you can see what they're offering. So if I was looking for courses that are within the biology department, I would click on biology and there would be just a lot of information about these courses, who's teaching them. Um, so that's one way that you can go ahead and look at what's being offered and then we'll demonstrate the STAR GPS um, registration way as well. Um, Something to note, so we want to make sure as we go through this checklist that, um, so reviewing course restrictions and prerequisites. Many of our majors within CTAR require general chemistry, and you do need to take a UH Badoas chemistry placement exam in order to register for chemistry, unless you are transferring in a chemistry course or credits for chemistry that might fulfill the prerequisites. Um, so it's important to be aware of those things. Language is another area where there are placement exams. Let's say you took Spanish in high school, you want to place into a higher level and start at a higher level, there's um, the opportunity for you to look into that. Um, with math, we have many of our majors that require pre-calculus or calculus. So you would want to take the math placement exam. They offer both in-person and there's also an online option as well. Um, for physics, math, the math placement tends to determine physics um, or there's a math prerequisite for physics. Um, so I know we've had a lot of like Q&A time and um, I encourage you to review this checklist if you really like checklists, <laughs> but we're gonna jump over and just start doing the demo because I think this is where questions might come up. Um, so our demo is actually a fictitious student, so you don't have to worry about privacy issues. The student is Starry Night. And um, so when we look at it, when you first log into STAR, and STAR can be accessed by going to um, the MyUH services and clicking over to STAR registration. Um, and then you can also see in our browser the website address is star.hawaii.edu. Um, when you log in, you will see GPS registration as your first page. That is your course planning tool. That is also your registration tool. Um, this contains the courses that you will need to complete your degree program. And for those of you that have transferred in credits, you'll be able to see your transfer credit evaluation using STAR, and it will also adapt and account for the transfer credit. So those will appear in earlier terms before you start UH Manoa. Um, so what is left when you log in is what you have to complete. Um, and okay now we're looking at the fall 2019 and you can see that there is a, a blue rectangle that says register add drop classes so that is an indication that the schedule is available um, i like to think of star gps as it's like a shopping process it'd be like online shopping so when i look at the course plan this is the grocery list so the registration system is going to recommend to you what it suggests you take. If you are uncertain if it's the right amount of courses, um, if you're especially if you're transferring credit, we, re we recommend doing an advising appointment because we can adjust this um, grocery list. But this is your grocery list. And when you're ready you're to go to the store and register, you're going to click register add drop classes. And there are some great videos that you can watch um, that will go over just in detail the registration process. 
um, we're going to go ahead and skip ahead and you're going to see the, the registration checklist. Now the registration checklist appears every semester as you're about to register. Um, we just want you to review your student record and update your contact information. Um, typically will prompt you to review the university's policies and then you can click continue to clear yourself. This is also the page where if you had a hold, it would show up. So it would tell you you have a hold, the date that it becomes active, and a phone number for the, the department or office that put it there. Um, so make sure, you know, if you have a hold, you work to clear it. There are common holds that Martin that talked about, like for students that still need to submit their health clearance information or their final transcript. Um, okay, so we're going to go to preview to actually get into the registration system. Now I have my shopping list and when I click on select a course, it's going to take me to where I can identify the class, the day and time that I would like. So, um, so I have comparative nutrition here. There's only one option. I click on the bubble in order to put it in my shopping cart. And then you'll see on the right hand side, it's a little bit hard to see. I'm going to kind of move this, this screen. Let's see. Can I let me close that. Okay, so now, so you should see that we have the item, the, um, the class next to the requirement, comparative nutrition, and then there's a calendar that shows you your weekly schedule. So you just continue forward putting items in. Um, you'll notice a couple of things. There's this option that will allow you to expand. Um, and when you click expand, it'll give you the course details. So the course details will tell you more about the class itself, it, if it has a prerequisite, um, and then it'll also tell you the instructor's contact information if you have questions or for some reason you know, wanted to reach out and contact them. Um, with our animal science classes, because that's what the fictitious student is majoring in, um, there's typically only one section for the animal science courses. But when we move into something like chemistry, um, we tend to see more than one. So what, what I recommend as a strategy is that you, as you shop, you choose the classes first that only have one section or very limited options, and you save the types of courses that may have a plethora of options for later, and this will help you avoid time conflicts. So I'll choose the organic chemistry lecture because there's only two of them, and the lab, there's a ton of options, so I will, I will save that for later, right? So... Um, so before we go into the organic chemistry lab, I'm going to go ahead and choose the lab for the animal science agriculture course, which there's less options. Um, and then I'm going to pick the organic chemistry lab. And just be mindful of what the schedule is looking like. So for some of you, when you look at your class schedule, you may not like huge gaps during your week. Um, some students like to aim to cluster their courses if possible. Um, Okay, and then we're going to go to the global and multicultural perspective. So you will notice in your plan that you have general education course markers that have a variety of options for you. Um, so you can either scroll through all of the options or on the left hand column, you can narrow down your search by filtering. So let's say I want to take a global multicultural perspectives course and I see that my Monday and Wednesday mornings are really open. I can narrow down my search to try and find a class for just Mondays and Wednesdays that fulfills this requirement. So I clicked Monday, Wednesday, I click search, and then it, it narrowed it down for me. So now it's only showing me Monday, Wednesday option. So that's something that you can do um, to make it a little bit easier. So once I have all of my shopping cart full, I click checkout in order to prepare to register. So when you see the yellow, you'll notice it says pending. So this means that you're not yet registered, it's just pending. And we recommend, like Martin had said before, this is a good time right now for you to start putting stuff in your cart, see if there's any time conflicts, what your schedule looks like. Um, give yourself time to really create the schedule that you would like. And then that by the time you do have your registration start time, you just have to go in there and click submit. Um, so to actually check out, and to register, you'll click submit add drop, add drop classes. Um, now, I can't show you what happens once you click submit because as an advisor, I can't register students. Students have to register themselves. But what I'll describe to you is when you click submit add drop, if you are successfully registered, on the left-hand side, it will show in green that you have been registered in a course. 
if you have difficulty, if there is some type of an error, you will see it appear on the, in, the, in red next to the course. So it will say not registered and it'll tell you what the error is. Um, so for some of our students, they may be trying to add a class that they haven't taken the placement test for, um, or they may be trying to add a class that requires a lab with it and they, they didn't add the lecture and lab together. Um, so you wanna read the prerequisite error and that'll let you know where to start and how to resolve the issue. Um, if it's not clear to you how to resolve that error, you're welcome to contact us. It's definitely something we encourage students to reach out if they need extra assistance in figuring out why a course is not allowing them in. Um, clicking expand and checking the course details. Like I've had students their first semester try and add a 400 level class, which is typically something upperclassmen will take. Um, so sometimes they get a level restriction and they wonder about that and it has to do with the amount of credits that you've earned. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to pause and see, are there questions about this demo? All right. We do have a couple of questions. Okay. And so we're going to verbalize it because we are recording this for future use. So I think your questions will help future generations uh, with, with their registration. So the first one is I have math 140 in my shopping list, but I completed that course this past semester as an early college class. Good for you, that's an intense class. Uh, will this course be removed from my shopping list once my transcript is sent? Yes, if you receive the passing grade. Yeah, and then so you have to make sure that your official transcript from that post-secondary institution is sent to our admissions office for review. Once the admissions office has time to review it, they will apply the credits to your STAR account and then that course will be satisfied. Yeah. And you also want to check with an advisor about, depending on the grade that you received, um, you'll want to see how that might impact future coursework in your major if there are prerequisites that have like a minimum grade. So to give you an example, um, for our animal science students, they, they do need to take college level physics, which is physics 151 and lab here at the university. And the prerequisite, so if they took math 140 and get a C or higher, that can fulfill the prerequisite for physics. So it's good to work with an advisor just to see like how your grade might impact your sequencing. And the next question is, how will I be exempt from a class once my AP scores come in? So depending on what your test score was on that AP exam, um, you could qualify for college credits. So you will need to request that your official test scores are sent to our admissions office, and it's the same process. So once they receive your official test scores, um, they will bring in those college credits where applicable, if applicable, and then uh, those requirements will be satisfied in your STAR as well. And make sure to bring up the, the AP exam that you've taken and what you're expecting um, in terms of when you're working with an advisor, because it's good for us to know if you took um, AP calculus, maybe we should delay having you register for calculus until the transfer credit has been evaluated. Um, are there certain required classes as a freshman or can you take any classes? So yes and no, it really depends. Um, so some majors have more flexibility than others, um, but there's definitely, um, there's, there's probably a preferred way to start and so to, to figure out what that is or what classes you should be taking as an incoming freshman, you can book and advise an appointment and then we can look at your star and then we can shuffle that GPS pathway or that registration around so that we can sequence your classes in a way that will optimize your time with us. Um, and also I wanna show you on star GPS registration. So if you're trying to add in a course that's not showing up in your plan, um, so let's say that you really like yoga and there's a one credit beginning yoga class that's being taught. Um, so the way that you could search for that is you click add a personal choice, select a course, and then you can, the course alpha refers to the department. So in general, a lot of our activity courses come from our kinesiology, our KRS um, department. And so I'll show you, okay, if I'm looking, then kinesiology and rehab science, I do a search. 
And I can add in, there's a plethora of courses. So there's aerobics, there's swimming, and yoga is 170. It's a very popular one. Um, so yeah, so you can do that as well. You could follow the plan and add in maybe another credit. Are there other questions? Yes. If my final transcript won't be ready until late June, does that mean I can't register for classes until then? That is a great question. Uh, no, so your final transcript needs to be received before the start of the school year, um, but you can register once your registration goes live. And you can actually see your specific registration time in STAR when you go to the GPS pathway. It'll be in a red, a red text. Um, right above or right around that um, registration button. Yeah, where, the, where it says register at drop classes. That, it'll, there'll be red text that'll show you exactly when you can register for classes. So as soon as that date and time comes up, and it's in Hawaii Standard Time, um, you can register for classes regardless of us receiving your health clearances and um, your final transcript. So definitely take advantage and register as soon as possible. Okay. Are there other? Was that the last? That was the last chat? question. Okay. Are there any now. that uh, any other questions that you'd like to ask over your mic? Okay. okay. Well, I think that concludes our registration demo. Um, so we do encourage you to book an advising appointment if you would like to speak more with an advisor or have. Um, just a need for more specialized planning. So other things that might um, require specialized planning, you want to do study abroad. And your major, when you look at that plan, it's very course heavy and it's hard to really figure out when you would do it. Talk to one of us and we can help you figure out how to plan it in. Okay. So if there are no more questions, then we'll be closing our workshop. Um, hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I just had a quick question because I did receive an email about work study. So do you guys have any information about that? So that's that Seeky website that I had referred to um, in the beginning of the presentation. Um, so it's, you can even search like UH Seeky, that's S-E-C-E in Google and it'll pull it up. But if you go back to that checklist through the admissions website, uh, it's towards the top. I think it's like step two. Step two. Okay. Or three. Um, oh, here it is. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, there. So the link is here. It's um, seceitshavaieedu forward slash seceE slash login. Um, but basically, uh, as a University of Hawaii student, and you are eligible for work study, you can technically work um, any student job on any of the 10 campuses. Um, I would recommend probably applying to positions on our campus, being that you're our student is probably the most convenient, but you're not limited to that. So if you are uh, commuting from, let's say, um, the east side, like, and you see that they have on-campus jobs at Windward Community College, uh, you could apply for those position, positions over there. Uh, I definitely recommend if you do qualify for work studies that, that you do take advantage of it um, because it is a great opportunity. Good question. Um, and then I also had another question. I received also an email talking about how I can be, um, I don't remember, to be like a... Ambassador. A leader or like the uh, ambassador. Yes, an ambassador. Yes. So in that same email, I think you were asking about the work study. It's because we are offering jobs for new students um, starting in fall or possibly a little earlier. Um, if you responded to that email, um, we would give you additional instructions, which are to where to send your resume and your cover letter. Um, and it can be a work study job if, if you are a work study student. Um, in regards to being an ambassador, um, we would love to have you if you're an outgoing student, you love talking to people, you love being involved. Um, you can also reply to that email and that will let us know that you're interested and we can talk more about what the duties are and how you can start getting involved in that way. 
Uh, yeah, because in the email, it had a link on the bottom that said, if you would like to be an ambassador to click it. And I tried clicking it, but it said, you are prevented from using this link. And I was just wondering how, like, I can fill out the link or the form. Because that I would love to be question. an ambassador. That is a very good observation, Jessica. Thank you very much. We will fix that link. All thank right, you. thank you. So you can jump back on there. Uh, we will open it up for everybody and uh, you can go ahead and fill out the link. Um, well, yeah, those are the only two questions I had right now. All right, well, I hope you become an ambassador. It's a great program and you get to meet other students in it as well. So even if you are reserved, um, it's, it's great to, to do it and try new things. Um, and learn, I guess, like ways to be more outgoing. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's great networking. All right, well, if there are no other questions, that will conclude our online webinar. <laughs> <laughs> um, but feel free to book an appointment. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Have a great summer, uh, and we will see you in the fall.